In this video, we'll show you how to set up your Scorekeeper application to hot sync and work with the TurboStout analytics package for doing pitch charts and spray charts. First thing you want to do is check your hot sync manager settings to make sure if you just recently installed it that it's set up for network hot syncing. So go to connections and then make sure network is checked. Okay, hit done. Again, that's down here. Click on the little up arrow and you'll see the hot sync icon. And then you can hit settings. Once that's set up, click on your file folder and go into the WinStats folder and then go into the pilot folder and look for a file called scorekeeper.exe there's going to be several scorekeeper files, but choose the one that says scorekeeper exe. Right click on it and choose properties and go to compatibility. Check the option to run this program in compatibility mode for Windows XP Service Pack 3. Hit apply. Okay, and then look for another file called emulator. Right click on that file and choose properties, compatibility and set that also for XP Service Pack 3 and hit apply. Okay, so now when you start up the Scorekeeper application, you may get an initial pop-up that says, is it okay to allow this app to run on your computer? Hit okay. And then when you start the Scorekeeper, it may, at the bottom, it might not show up, and at the bottom, you'll just have an icon. And you click on that icon, and you don't see it here, but it'll pop up a screen that allow you to open a session. Click on the open session button and click scorekeeper.psf and that will open up this session will pop up. Okay, and once you do this the first time you'll be all set. It won't pop up anymore. You may get two icons at the bottom. You do both of them. Make sure you set them both up. Open the scorekeeper PSF. Now when you're finished, you want to exit out. You could right click and choose exit and save changes. Or you click on the menu here and choose exit. Either way, you'll exit out of the scorekeeper program. And the scorekeeper, uh, you always have to save changes. So you could score a full game with this application. If you never press the save button, it won't be saved. If your computer reboots because of its installing updates or something, you wouldn't get anything saved. So make sure that you hit the save button as you score in the game. Um, after you set up your compatibility, you're going to have to go back to the original scorekeeper screen. So you can click the hot sync icon here or go back to the field icon and click scorekeeper. You're going to have to register it. So put in the serial number that you received for TurboStats and the four digit scorekeeper password. That way it will be registered and you will be able to create games right here on the Scorekeeper application. This is your game list. You can select any game and hit scorecard. If the game hasn't been played, you will be prompted to enter the home and visiting lineup. Make sure you have a pitcher. You can set the fielding positions here for the players on your team. Okay, after you set all those up, you hit done. And then you can hit the visitor lineup, put in their information, hit done and then hit OK. If you didn't put positions in for everyone, you'll get a message and then you'll start off and you'll be ready to score the first game. OK, we'll give you a little demonstration how to score with Scorekeeper in a little bit. Right now, we want to get into how to sync the program and work it with the um, analytics package here. So after the game is scored, hit the sync button here at the bottom and then press this icon right in the middle here and the application will sync. If it doesn't sync and it seems to hang up, okay, what you want to do is just make sure that you go to the hot sync and then the primary PC setup and click in here on the primary PC address and type in 127.0.0.1. And what that'll do is allow you to rescan your computer to see if you're on a different network and your IP address had changed. Um, that would be one of the main reasons why it wouldn't sync. And you can delete the PC name here at the top. Um, and when you hit OK and when you sync, it'll find that information and it'll automatically put it back in for you here. So whatever your IP address is and your computer name. All right, and he says the save button and that information will be stored. 
so the next time you start scorekeeper you won't be prompted. Now again these two icons you're going to use to go back and forth between the scorekeeper application and the syncing. If you're scoring a game every half inning you could hit the save button and then the sync button and sync it over and you'll be able to view that scouting data in the Turbo Scouts Turbo Scout analytics package. So let's start up Turbo Scout here uh, on the with the icon and what's going to happen when Turbo Scout loads is you will see all the games that you've scored on the scorekeeper application. So I'll move this screen over to the side here so we can see both at the same time. And let's just go into a previously scored game. Let's see if I have any on here. I don't have any on. So let me load up a previously scored game uh, with the Kansas City uh, team here so I can go in and uh, we have the games are, are stored on your computer in the um, my documents folder so if you go to my documents and then you go into the desktop manager and then look for the name of the TurboStats uh, team it's usually called uh, Turbo is the name of the user. This one's called Test, but it's usually the username is called Turbo. And they go into the folder that is says either Backup or Archive. Okay, if I go to Backup, it'll show you all the games that you've synced over onto your computer. And if you go into Archive, it'll show you previous games you had on that you've deleted from the Scorekeeper application. So you can put games back on. Uh, right from this screen here as well. See there's a World Series Game 3. If I just double click on it, it'll run what we call the POM install tool. And that'll load up this screen right here and show you that this game is ready to load to the POM, to the user here called Test. And I'm going to hit Done to that one. I'm going to load another game up here, double clicking on it. Same thing. Now i got two games going in. And let's put a third game in. Okay, they're all in here. I hit done. So now to get these games over into the scorekeeper program, I just want to go into the sync screen and hit sync. Okay, now when I go into the scorekeeper program, you'll see that those games have been loaded up here, and I can highlight any of them and go into scorecard view and view anything that happened in the game. I can scroll back and see any events. I could hit go to, scroll through the game that way as well. Okay. If you want to see anything on the scorekeeper in terms of scouting, you can click on the pitcher and it will show you charts. So you can see all the different pitch charts, you can see pitch stats, you can switch pitchers by clicking the little pull down list here, picking another pitcher out of the list. Okay, uh, you can pick a batter and then you can see spray charts for the batter. And if you hit all games, it'll show you everything that they've done. Uh, once I put the code in here, I didn't put the scorekeeper code, and then it'll show you every game that you have on the scorekeeper application. Okay, so now we're scoring the game, and we sync it over here, and the game comes right in here uh, into the scorekeeper uh, Turbo Scout um, screen. And you can highlight any game you want to use in the stats or mo multiple games as well. If you notice, the batting order is going to change to the, the order of the last game. So let's just say there's a pitcher in the first game here that's not in the last game. Okay. Uh, you just highlight that game last. And then you can pick the pitcher that you want. Okay. If there's any pitch is thrown and click on the pitcher versus batter option and you'll see all the charts for the pitcher throwing to different batters. I have multiple pitchers selected here. If I just pick one I'll see just that pitcher. If I want to see specialty stats like just versus righty batters I could choose that or just versus lefty batters. If I want to pick a particular batter that this, this pitcher faced, I could highlight that as well. If you face that batter in multiple games or multiple at-bats, at you'll see the combination of all the at-bats for that batter, even across multiple games. So again, I can come back here and hit all batters. If I want to make a chart uh, of pitch types per count, 
I just click on charts and then I have uh, ball strikes per count. I have pitch types per count, the types of pitches thrown. I have the ability to pick percent pitch types by count if I want. And you could go into the settings here and let's see here. There's a way to set it for baseball format. I thought that was under here. And here's your pitching. Okay, and then pitching seven types, pitching nine types for baseball. Okay, that's how you do it. And then make sure that's set. And then go in here and you could pick any other types of charts that you want to produce and again it's batter versus pitcher or pitcher versus batter so make sure you pick the right chart that you want to create here if you go back to the location screen if you want to print these you can make a nice PDF of these um, charts just click on the print icon and in the print driver here printer setup choose PDF redirect. Now if you don't have PDF redirect loaded on your computer click on this little icon here and you could download it. It's a free PDF printer driver and it allows you to print multiple pitch uh, charts, uh, multiple pages and put them into one PDF file. Otherwise uh, the Microsoft PDF driver that you get may prompt you for a new file name after every chart that you print. So if I highlight uh, several pictures here and I want to print you know all these different pictures at one time if I hit um, print the PDF redirect program will pop up and you can see that it made multiple pages and they all combine into one PDF file if this was the Microsoft PDF driver I would have four or five different file names and that's a little bit difficult to manage so I could just give it one file name here make sure I pick the folder that I, I want to put it in if I want to put in my library and in my documents okay I could just call it you know turbulence I can call it week one uh, whatever I, uh, scouting report I want to create and I just hit the save button and it's going to make a PDF file on my computer okay and that's it that's a simple program you could just download it right uh, from the icon in our software application and it will you know create these great PDF reports for you and you can mix a combination of reports if you want if you want to print uh, some charts and, and, and you just highlight the charts and hit print okay and the PDF driver will load up and now I could go here and I could add another type of chart to this PDF file pitch types by count and I could hit print and you see that will add into there and then I can go back into the locations and I can highlight just you know one or two pictures and I can hit print and all these charts could be all combined into one PDF file with this application if you want to get rid of one of these charts just highlight it and hit this little negative sign I'll remove it from the list if you want to change the order and just highlight it and then you could use this up arrow here and then you could change and put that chart at the very top of your PDF output so you can customize your PDF reports in the format that you want here which is real nice and then you just give it a file name and hit save okay so that shows you how to use the scout program now if you're scoring a game and you're in the middle of scoring the game and let's just say you give a guy a single okay and you can throw balls and strikes here if you want to chart the pitches you click on this little icon here now it's not going to work because I don't have the password in there um, but uh, I'll put some stuff in here for now it actually just let me work in the trial mode here so this is how you, you trap it now if, you, if the ball is a uh, cutter choose the rise option okay for some reason we don't have cutter as a choice but if you choose rise it will show up here as a cutter uh, on the scorekeeper uh, scouting program. So you score an event now if the ball is put in play hit fastball the outcome was in play and then you just hit single where the ball was hit done 
advance the runners if you have to. These are quick keys like batted forward, stolen base, pass ball, wild pitch, or you could hit advance and you could hit batted forward, stolen base this way. Oh, but there's some other things like if it's a fielder's choice, a balk, you could choose those options that aren't in the hot menus here. These help you score the game very quickly. These are outs over here, forced out, tagged out, or caught stealing. Okay, so hit done. Now, if you wanted to sync this data over here, okay, you just pop up to the sync screen, hit sync. The syncing will happen. You go back to the scorekeeper application, go back into the scorecard. You'll be right where you left off. And come in here and hit the sync button. Okay, and then the games will show up that you just recently synced. And see, I added these again, so that's why they show up here again, because I put them back on the scorekeeper program. Uh, three new games here. So, you know, now if I highlight any of these games, I can see the current stats. So whose pitcher is, is Wade Davis. Okay, um, let me highlight this game. This is the other team here. This is Kansas City. Look for them in here. Okay, Wade Davis. And now I can see that it's the stats and then that current information that I just scored will be in the scouting. So you can see these scouting reports while the game's going on, while you're scoring it here in the Scorekeeper application. So that gives you a quick overview on how to use Scorekeeper in Scout. Now after the games are, are done and you sync, you're going to want to bring the stats part into the Turbo Stats application. Okay, so what you want to do is close out of the scouting screen, bring in the Turbo Stats Manager program. That's going to start up over here. And open up your existing team. Okay, let's see if I don't have these teams on here. Do I? Let me see here if I have Mets. I don't have it. Yeah, here we are. Here's the Mets. Okay, so now I go into the game screen here by clicking on games. And then here's all your games. This is the World Series, so there was multiple games in here. So if you want to import the games, you hit the import screen and choose from the scorekeeper app. And what's going to happen is if your name matches, like if you go back to this, the team form where it says the name of the team, if it says New York Mets, the same way you have it appearing here in the scorekeeper under the lineup screen, see right here, New York Mets, if it matches, you'll see the games in the list here. If it doesn't match, what's going to happen is you're just going to have to pick manually the team name out of this list. Then you'll see the games played for the Mets. You can highlight any game. If you want to see a box score, hit the box score button here. Okay, and you'll get the box score screen come up. And this is a graphical box score. If you want to post it onto the website, you could put a photo here. Okay, so I could show the photo. Okay, and if you want to add a photo, you just click add photo down here. Okay, if you want to add the score sheet from the scorekeeper program, you can hit add score sheet. Okay, and it'll give you a choice to pick one of your games you scored. So you could hit there and you could hit print scorecard. PDF redirect and you could make it that way. Okay, and the scorecard will come up. And then you can add that into your box score. So you have a box score you can post online that has a scorecard, a photo of the game, a recap, and it will choose the top performers of the game and give you even the player photos. So just hit post website if you want to do that. Now, if you're running one of our league programs, you have to know what your league name is here and what game number it is. If it's just a single team, you just put your team name in here. It should come in by default, or you could pick, uh, just type it in there, and then you could put what game number you're playing, and you can post it that way. Or you could just print this uh, information. Um, if you go here and you hit uh, text box score, you could just print this uh, screen. There'll be a print button that shows up over here, and you could use that and just print a, a printout of it. You could also copy it because it is ASCII text, so you could just highlight all this data here and right-click and choose copy and paste it right into an email and send it to somebody as well. So when you're ready to import the game, you hit import from the Scorekeeper app, highlight the game, and hit import game. Okay, and it'll... You want to create a new game, you hit yes, okay to import it, and hit okay, and it's just going to bring all the players and all their stats in. Now, a lot of schools like to use this for inter-squad games, so if you're playing your team and you use your team for both the home 
and the, the uh, visitor for the game, you're going to have to import the game twice. So hit import again from the scorekeeper app, okay, for save this game. And so what will happen is every inch your squad game you'll have, you'll have two games here in the game list. The stats will all be fine and the players could play for both teams. So if you swap players during the game, you could put them from one team to another and their total stats will still appear. You'll see they, maybe they had two at-bats for one team and one at-bat for the other team. They'll all come in uh, and combine fine when you do your stat report. When you want to make a season stat report, hit compile stats and you can hit team stats and then you can pick different game types like here it's a playoff game you can pick any type of game there's an add button in here you can create your own game types if you play in a preseason tournament you want to give it a name and this way you'll be able to break down your stats by that particular type of tournament if you click on the advanced tab here you'll be able to put in a range of dates if you want all the games played after a certain date you could just hit from you don't have to hit to and just put in the date and all the games played after that date will show up in your report or the same thing with two you could pick just the two button and it'll, it'll list the games from the beginning of the season to that particular date and again you could put in the range and have both of these checked if you want to see games versus one particular opponent you could just highlight that opponent and then your stats will just be for one opponent you can also set all the different categories you want on or off. If you want to see hits to left, center, or right, you could turn those on. You know, anything you want to do to customize your report is all under these batting, fielding, and pitching tabs. Okay, you want to list all the types of pitches shown, uh, thrown, turn them on here. Hit OK, and you'll make your report. At the bottom, you'll have a batting, a fielding, and a pitching tab. So you can see the different stats broken down. Only the pictures will show up in the pitching report. If you'd like to make an HTML or a web page of this, you could hit that HTML button. If you're going to email it to someone, you can hit the email. It'll make an HTML file and give you the ability to add it to your um, email. It's easy just to hit the HTML and just go and add it as a file attachment. If you'd like to post this data up on your free team website, click the team website button here and you can put a team logo here and choose what reports you would like to see on your website. You have a home page editor where you can add different photos you can add in for your team. You can link your Twitter page, Facebook page. If you link your Twitter, you could turn this embed option on or off. And what it'll do is it'll put the Twitter feed right in with your web page it creates. Okay, you can make a custom background. Just come over here in this background and choose custom. You can pick a file name and your own photo of the background of your field. Okay, and then you could just, if you have a video uh, that you want to include, a team video of your last game or an overall highlight of the year, you could put a URL to for a YouTube video here. And, you know, you could also link to different sites if you have a league site or whatever, and you could put those site names up here. See, this league site matches the text up here on your menu you're going to see on your website. If you want that menu to appear, just click on it. And then choose Post Website, and your website will be posted with all the stats you have turned on. We have the option to password protect your stat report if you would like. You just have to order the Turbo Drive uh, premium package um, and then you'll get a ability to password protect your site so only you or, or whoever you give the password to could could see the site online. It gives you a good overview of the program, how it works. Uh, if you want to add player photos, you, what you, hear, you do here is just highlight the player and hit add or crop photo and it, what it'll do is it'll give you the ability to pick a team uh, photo let me see if I have anything on here as a sample yeah you pick a team photo and when the photo comes up uh, let me see if I can make this into this area here where you could see it it's a large screen but you, you move the square around to whatever players face you want and then just hit crop and it'll put that player right in there and it'll ask you if you want to upload it to the team website and you just hit yes and that photo will go right up to the internet and be available for all your uh, box scores and player stat reports. It makes a really nice website, very simple to use. So that gives you a good overview of how the system works and how you work between the scouting program and the scorekeeper program. One thing I did not show you 
was how to create your teams here in the TurboStats application and then sync them over to the scorekeeper so you don't have to enter the rosters in the scorekeeper. You can come in here and hit create a new team and give it a file name. Okay, I like to put the, uh, the year at the end of the file name, like I can say Reds 18 for 2018 or Reds 19 for next year's uh, team. I can put the full team name up here and this is the name that will show up in the scorekeeper application. And then you could just hit add player and then enter the information, hit save. Or you can go and hit max preps if it's a high school and you can go and find your team in max preps and it will import the roster that way. Let me open up an existing roster that I have already. Go back to the Mets. And if you want to sync this over to the scorekeeper program to score, click on the lineup screen. And then you could drag and drop the players on the field and put them in different uh, positions on the field. You could set up a batting order here, or you can click on our little batting order card where you could set up a batting order by dragging players over here and putting them in a lineup position. Okay, you can move them around on the lineup, switching locations for the batting order. You could put the positions right here if you would like. Okay. And then there's a little icon down here that says export to scorekeeper. So after you set the batting order in the lineup, click the export to scorekeeper icon. Okay, and it'll come pop up this screen here where you could pick uh, your team here. And if you want to play against a different opponent, you can click on the import button here and look for uh, a name of a team. These things are all popped up here. That you so I could pick up a team name. Hang on, let me try this one more time here. Close out of the lineup. Okay. And then down here you can click the scorekeeper export as well. If you click the icon over here, it's going to take the lineup in the order that you saw in your team form here. And it's going to take the fielding for whichever inning that you have set up. Like if you want to set up a different fielding layouts for a different um, innings, and then you want to, you know, especially for youth teams, you can come into the second inning and say, well, I mean, he's going to play a different position in the second inning. And you see it shows where Granderson's playing in, in all different innings. I go to the fifth inning. I could put him in right field. Okay. So you can set up your team alignments, change the innings here, and you can print a multi-inning lineup card, which is nice. Just pick multi-inning, how many innings you want to include, put an opponent name, hit create. And you'll get this nice chart that shows where everybody's playing. You could also make it a graphical chart by clicking on the print icon here and choosing field layout and say I want to have um, two by three and I want innings one through six and I could hit a preview here and you could see that it'll show graphical layout here uh, of the field with the positions. This is a great for a youth team. You could put that uh, on a chart and put it up on a dugout fence and everyone will know what inning they're, they're playing in which position. Um, so there's a lot of capabilities in the program. But when you're ready to do the scorekeeper, you click on the icon to send it to scorekeeper. This screen's going to pop up. Again, I'll get this to work right this time. There it goes. And now I could pick the opponent that they're going to play. Okay, so let's see. The Mets are going to play uh, the Royals, hit OK. It's going to load the other team's lineup. And then I'm going to hit Create here. OK to export to the Scorekeeper app. Hit Yes. Now the screen that comes up here allows you to pick who's the home or visiting team for the game. So you could swap that here. And you give it a file name. Now, if I make three games for New York versus Kansas City, they're all going to have the same file name. This name is going to show up in the Scorekeeper program on this game list here. So if I hit return to game list, this is going to be the game name. So what we want to do is put something in here that shows that it's a unique game. Otherwise, you'll overwrite a game that's already here. So you might want to put, a, you know, like a, a one in front of it for the first time they play. If you have a league, you might have all your games numbered from one to whatever, and you could always put the game number first. Or you can come at the end of the file, and you could put something like the date. But if you put the date in there, do not use this slash key because that will mess things up because file names can't have a slash. So put it like an underscore. 10, 24, 25, 
okay, 18. So if you want to put the date in there, you could put it there, or you could just put any type of number at the end. And then you hit next, okay, finish. Okay, and now when you sync your scorekeeper program, okay, and then you go back to the scorekeeper application, okay, that extra game that you just created will be right there on your list there, right at the top. And then you just hit scorecard and put in your lineups, and you can make changes here. If you want to move players around here, you could say up or down, they can move down. If you want to hit move to, you could swap it to a position of another player and they'll swap. Um, so if a player is batting, make sure the box is checked. Sometimes you check the bottom, you might have someone who's batting down here and you don't want that to happen as you're going through the batting order. All of a sudden that player will, um, you know, be up and you might not catch it. So make sure you check and make sure only the players batting have their boxes. You could have the full team batting as many players as you like and only just have you know nine or ten playing positions if you're playing uh, in uh, a, sh a softball league where you have a short fielder or ten players on the field make sure you put at least one short fielder out there you don't have to fill in every position but if you do that when you're entering uh, plays if it has a sh let me put a picture in here if you're entering plays for the game I do the visitors I gotta put a picture for this team and I'll put a short fielder here. Okay, so let's say I'm, I have a fly out and I click here, done. It gives you that extra position here. So you have your 10 fielders to choose whether there's an out by a, the right center fielder. And then you hit done. Okay, and that about wraps it up. We're going to post some other videos as well, but uh, it's a great application. Uh, the stats that you get out of there um, are very advanced, uh, especially with, I didn't show you here, I'm going to go back real quick and make a righty versus lefty report uh, for you to look at. So go to team and then make sure righty versus lefty is picked for batting and pitching and you can do fielding by position. And I hit OK here, and now you'll see right versus left and all. So it breaks down righty versus lefty, both from the batting and the pitching perspective. And fielding, it'll show you every position played with a total uh, at, you know, or total fielding or a total at each particular position. And so this is nice if you have players that are going out for all conference or um, awards for a particular position, you could show just their stats at that position. There's also a player analyzer. If you come over here, let me get back into, let me get out of this thing, maximum mode here, and we go back to the roster screen here. If you look at the bottom here, there is um, metrics. If you click on metrics, and okay, you'll get a screen here where you could pick the player and see their stats by count, okay, their averages by count, how they're hitting, okay, so it's a really nice report you can create. And again, that's um, either click the player analyzer icon at the top or go to the metrics screen here on the main screen. If you want to do pitch charts, click on charts. You can highlight multiple players. You could preview, you could have game by game stats for multiple players, so everything that they've seen done in every game, or you could just do totals for players. This is a preview, okay? Um, if you get this message, you might have to set your default printer. Uh, in Windows 10, if your default printer is controlled by Windows, it may not uh, work every time when you click print, it might give you that message. So go into the settings here, this um, icon on the far right, go to settings, and then go to uh, printers. I can't show you this screen here. Go to uh, devices and printers, go to printers and scanners, and then uh, there's an option here with let Windows manage my default printer. Uncheck that, and then highlight uh, your printer that you want and say manage and then say set as default. So make sure that you have PDF redirect if you're using that one as your set as default Windows printer if you get those error messages when you're trying to print. But so now you have game by game. You could print multi-game. Um, I'm getting this message for the printer. So you can print multi-game reports. So this is every game that that player batted in just for a report per player. 
okay and you can make these charts into a PDF file and you can even load up that PDF file on your team website so if you go to team website and you click on charts okay there's an option to include spray charts okay and what it's going to do is going to allow you to pick the format of your charts and, and what players you want to include. And when you print the chart, you want to name the chart the name of your team. In this case, the team is called METS. So I want to call this chart METS.PDF. And then that will automatically upload to my website where you'll have a nice pitching chart or spray chart or whatever you want to include, combo. Um, you can put multiple charts in that one PDF file. But in order to get that to link on your website, it has to be named after the team name, Mets.pdf. Okay, I hope you got a lot of information out of this video. Uh, we wish you a lot of success for your team. And if you have any questions, you can call our support line or send an email to support at turbostats.com. Thank you.